Let me give you a warm welcome to our worship service this Sunday morning and we do want to encourage each other to uh, praise God wherever this might find you. And in, in a moment or two we're going to be singing his praise. We'll be hearing from God's servant uh, later of course as we continue in Joshua. But before we do all of that we just want to invite God to come and be with us. And we normally would do that by a prayer. We're going to use Psalm 97 eh, as a prayer just to lead us into a time of worshipping Almighty God. This is Psalm 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries all around. His lightnings light up the world, the earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the peoples see his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame, who make their boast in worthless idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. O you who love the Lord, hate evil. He preserves the light lives of his saints. He delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. We're going to uh, worship Almighty God now as we just sing that short chorus through a few times. I worship you, Almighty God. I worship you. Oh 
for you are my righteousness. Certainly not relying on our own uh, goodness. It's all to do with the Lord Jesus. And we want to continue uh, with a, an attitude of thankfulness, uh, having a, a grateful and thankful heart when we're coming into the presence of God is all, always a good way to, to just to have as our approach to the throne of grace and humble of heart. I will give thanks to thee, O Lord, among the people. This is actually taken from Psalm 57.
going to be reading from Joshua chapter 15. And before we do that, let's just uh, commend our time to the, the Lord himself. Let's pray. Lord God and loving Heavenly Father, we know that we have been brought into a, a wonderful and new relationship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who is crowned the Lord of Heaven, crowned the Lord of Life, crowned the Son of God and with many crowns. And so Lord, we are so humbled when we consider that we human sinning folk are able to have a communion time, a time of fellowship with the true and holy living God. And yet it's been made possible because of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's to uh, him that we plead uh, our case before you, and yet you've accepted it, Lord. You've, you've, you've told us that we're acquitted because you're, you've put the punishment on to your own Son. And so, Lord, we just really ask that you might just help us. And as we read your word, we pray that you might just continue with us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, so here we are, Joshua chapter 15. The allotment for the tribe of the people of Judah, according to their clans, reached southward to the boundary of Edom, to the wilderness of Zin, at the farthest south, and their south boundary ran from the end of the Salt Sea, from the bay that faces southward. It goes out southward of the ascent of Akrabim, passes along to Zin, and goes up south of Kadesh or Kadesh Barnea, along by Hezron up to Adar, turns about to Karka, passes along to Asmon, goes out by the brook of Egypt, and comes to its end at the sea. This shall be your south boundary. And the east boundary is the Salt Sea to the mouth of the Jordan. And the boundary on the north side runs from the bay of the sea at the mouth of the Jordan. And the boundary goes up to Beth Hogla and passes along north of Beth Araba. And the boundary goes up to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. And the boundary goes up to Debir from the valley of Achor, and so north, turning toward Gilgal, which is opposite the ascent of Adum, which is on the south side of the valley. And the boundary passes along to the waters of En Shemesh and ends at En Rogel. Then the boundary goes up by the valley of the son of Hinnom at the southern shoulder of the Jebusite, that is Jerusalem. And the boundary goes up to the, the top of the mountain that lies over against the valley of Hinnom on the west at the northern end of the valley of Rephaim. Then the boundary extends from the top of the mountain to the spring of the waters of Nephtoah and from there to the cities of Mount Ephron. Then the boundary bends around to Bela, that is Kiriath Jarman, Jarman, Jarman and the boundary circles west of Bela to Mount Seir, passes along to the northern shoulder of Mount Jearim, that is Chesalon, and goes down to Beth Shemesh and passes along by Timnah. The boundary goes out to the shoulder of the hill north of Ekron, then the boundary bends around to Shikaron and passes along to Mount Bela and goes out to Jabneel. Then the boundary comes to an end at the sea, and the west boundary was the great sea with its coastline. This is the boundary around the people of Judah according to their clans, according to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua. He gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, a portion among the people of Judah, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron. Arba was the father of Anak. And Caleb drove out from there the three sons of Anak, Sheshai and Ahimam and Talmai, the descendants of Anak. And he went up from there against the inhabitants of Debir. Now the name of Debir formerly was Kiriath Sefer. 
And Caleb said, Whoever strikes Kiriath Sefer and captures it, to him will I give Achsa, my daughter, as wife. And Othniel, the son of Can Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, captured it, and he gave him Achsa, his daughter, as wife. When she came to him, she urged him to ask her father for a field, and she got off her donkey. And Caleb said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Give me a blessing, since you have given me the land of, ne of the Negev, give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the people of Judah according to their clans. The cities belonging to the tribe of the people of Judah in the extreme south toward the boundary of Edom were Kebzeel, Edir, Jagur, Kaina, Demona, Abada, Kedesh, Hazor, Ithnan, Ziph, Telem, Bealoth, Hazor Hadata, Kerioth Hezron, that is Hazor, Amam, Shema, Mulada, Hazar Gada, Heshmon, Beth Pelet, Hazar Shual, Beersheba, Bizeothia, Bela, Lim Ezem, El Tolad, Chesil, Horma, Ziklag, Madmana, Sansana, Lebeoth, Shilin, Ain, and Rimon. In all, 29 cities with their villages. And in the lowland, Eshtaol, Zora, Ashna, Zanoa, Enganim, Tapua, Enam, Jarmuth, Adullam, Soka, Azika, Sherem, Adithayim, Gedera, Gederothayim, 14 cities with their villages. Zenan, Hadasha, Mikdal, Gad, Dilian, Mizpe, Jokthil, Lachish, Bozkath, Eglon, Kavon, Lamam, Chitlish, Gedaroth, Beth Dagon, Neama, and Makida, sixteen cities with their villages. Libna, Ether, Ashan, Ifta, Ashna, Nezib, Kela, Achzib and Marisha, nine cities with their villages. Ekron with its towns and its villages from Ekron to the sea, all that were by the, sea, the side of Ashdod with their villages. Ashdod, its towns and its villages, Gaza, its towns and its villages, to the brook of Egypt and the great sea with its coastline. And in the hill country, Shamir, Jatir, Soko, Dana, Kiriath, Sana, that is Debir, Anab, Eshtemo, Anim, Goshen, Holon, and Gilo, eleven cities with their villages. Arab, Duma, Eshan, Janim, Beth Tapua, Afeka, Humta, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, and Zior, nine cities with their villages. Maon, Carmel, Ziph, Juta, Jezreel, Jok, Din, Zanoa, Cain, Gibeah, and Timna, ten cities with their villages. Halhul, Beth, Zur, Gedor, Maarath, Beth, Anoth, and Eltikon, six cities with their villages. Kiriath, Baal, that is Kiriath, Jerem, and Rabbah, two, two cities with their villages. In the wilderness, Beth Araba, Midden, Sekaka, Nibshan, the city of Salt, and Engedi, six cities with their villages. But the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the people of Judah, could not drive out. So the Jebusites dwell with the people of Judah at Jerusalem to this day. Amen. Let me maybe just encourage you to ask the Lord privately uh, to speak through his servant to you this morning. We come before God at, at mealtimes and we give thanks to God for the, the food that we're going to receive and ask a blessing on it. And I think it would be good if we had a practice where at the start of the word being preached that we have a moment with God and ourselves, and we just ask the Lord to, uh, 
both be thankful for his word and then to ask God to give us the nourishment spiritually that we need. Uh, and that can only come as the spirit uh, is allowed access to our lives. And we have to do that, of course. So let's just take a moment to do that and then we'll invite Rod. Amen. So let's uh, invite, I'd like to invite Rod now to come and share from God's Word. Thanks, Rod. Well, good morning and thank you to Mark and Tina for leading us this morning in those fantastic, wonderful worship hymns. May your hearts have been lifted this morning to know the reality of God in your lives. It's a wonderful day as we can come and praise our God and to give our lives over to him. And Joshua 15, we're going to be looking at are we living in light of our inheritance i really do feel for mark uh, reading these lists each week and now we have the list of the inheritance of the tribe of judah it really does seem quite tedious to us but it certainly wasn't to those who would possess the land. Paul says in Timothy, all scripture is profitable and therefore Joshua 15 must be profitable. Well, we're gonna look at three things today. God's promises, Caleb's faith, and God's pattern. Well, let's note this. Perhaps Israel's concrete and tangible inheritance in Canaan is a foreshadowing of our own inheritance. Lights might be installed in a building and the electricity may be connected. But if we do not use the switch to turn them on, the lights do not shine. There's electricity, yes, but there's no light. Practically, this is the same as having no electricity. This is the situation of many Christians. Even though they have God, they are like lights that do not shine because they do not turn on the switch by taking God as their inheritance. Being an heir is a wonderful thing. A man was said to have died with a fortune of one million pounds. When someone asked how he amassed that much money, the answer was that he did it through hard work perseverance, careful saving, frugal living. And then an uncle died and left him 995,000 pounds to put with his 5,000 that he'd saved. It can be a real blessing to be an heir. And that is never truer than when we realise what God has done for us in Christ. That is our inheritance. Our full inheritance is in the new heaven and the new earth. Not some earthless spiritual void. The New Testament tells us that believers, when they die are present with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord, 
Luke 23, 43 says, And he said to him, Truly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. And then Philippians 1 and 23, I am hard pressed between the two, my desire to depart and be with God, Christ. But it also, also tells us to lift our eyes to see the fullness of the hope in the resurrection day when we can have new glorified bodies. And not only the creation, but, our, but our, we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. This is the hope of our inheritance. We have been adopted, and as adopted sons, we have all that the Father has for us. We need to grasp that there is much more to salvation than Jesus dying for our sins. There is his imputed righteousness, but also our sanctification. And then there is our adoption into the family of God. We have been reconciled with the Father. Our sins separated us from God, and now through Jesus Christ, we are right with him. We were rescued, delivered from eternal destruction, brought into the family to receive an inheritance. Jesus was the first of the resurrected. He was raised from the dead, given a glorified body. And this gives us the hope of the resurrection to come. We will be raised and given our inheritance from our Father. We are joint heirs with Christ. When Jesus was raised, he was given a glorified body. And we will be given glorified bodies. But that's not the best part of the inheritance. The best bit is we will be where God is. We get to live in the presence of God. Our inheritance is God. As the Jews read these verses, they would be excited. And so should we, as we count, come to the realisation of what our, uh, our inheritance actually is we will be resurrected with glorified bodies to live in the presence of God in the new heaven and the new earth. Are you ready? Are you excited? Do you see how we are to live today in light of our inheritance? Commit by faith to wholly follow God not half-hearted or with reservation, but wholly, with all your heart, and find the reality of your inheritance now. Well, God's promise, we need to see clearly that chapter 15 deals with the detail of God's promise. And it's in line with the promise he made to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and chapter 15. What we have here is the concrete account of the fulfilment of God's promise in detail. It's a close-up of God's gift. How could that ever be boring? Well, let's reflect on our own lives at, for this moment picture our day. We wake up and we come to the realisation of being alive for another day. We get up, we wash and dress and then we do a quiet time with God and, and, and maybe have some breakfast. 
then some chores like putting the bins out or emptying the dishwasher or taking the dog out for a short walk and then to plan the day or to react to whatever is happening. Think of the numerous conversations, the meetings, the journeys. Not one of these details stagger the imagination. But like these towns in Judah, they are little incarnations of God's faithfulness and then can hardly be boring. We sing standing on the promises of God, but do we when things are going bad as well as things are going well? Are we totally reliant upon the promises of God? We really need to know and believe what God is telling us through these verses. He has promised us an inheritance that is God himself. Well, the second point we're looking at is Caleb's faith. Reading these words in uh, 13 to 19 should encourage you in your life journey. If you've already received Christ as your saviour, then receive your inheritance. Claim everything, spiritual, every spiritual blessing here on earth and live with your eyes of faith on what is coming. The best is yet to come. But are we willing to live in light of our inheritance now? Caleb was 85 years old but didn't look for an easy task. He asks God for a mountain to climb and for giants to conquer. How could he do this? Because his strength was the Lord's. He wholly followed the Lord. He knew God and God knew Caleb. He was an overcomer because he had faith in the Lord. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Note, we're never too old to make new conquests of faith in the power of the Lord. No matter how old we get, we must never retire from trusting and serving the Lord. In Joshua 15, verses 13 to 19, we see Caleb, who was not only a man of great boldness, but a man who would encourage others to greatness. He was providing for the next generation, not just materially, but spiritually. Caleb offered his daughter in marriage to the man who was bold enough to conquer a city in order to gain her hand. We see that some of his daring faith rubbed off on Nathaniel, who was up for the challenge. And in fact, Nathaniel becomes a judge in the land of Judges, in, in, uh, in Judges 3, 7 to 11. Caleb's faith even touched his daughter. She asked for a field that was dry and barren and then springs of water to irrigate the land in verse 19. Caleb's faith was more valuable to his family than the land he claimed for them. Caleb's faith was more valuable to his family than the land he claimed for them. Fathers, husbands, grandfathers, uncles, brothers, are you hearing this? What is the inheritance you want your families to get? Note the older generation must provide for the next generation, 
not only materially, but spiritually. To trust and obey, wholly following the Lord. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Are you prepared to say the same? Caleb not only talked faith, he acted faith. And God granted him success. We need to be a generation that is experiencing God. Otherwise, we're just talking about experiencing God. Or about what others are doing experiencing God. It needs to be our experience of God. Caleb's family saw God and Caleb at work together. It was God and me, not me and God, or in fact just me. We can obtain our inheritance when we are willing to risk obedience to God's promises. God wants you to have your inheritance now, but we don't have because we don't ask. In Jesus Christ, all believers are one in Christ and are heirs of God. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you are, were baptised into Christ have been have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. Please hear this. Nothing from your first birth should hinder you from claiming all that you have in Christ. Your history and all that has happened to you has been cleansed by the blood. Remember, but don't let your past define you. Let Jesus do that. Don't let the pain of past abuses prevent you from taking your inheritance. Take them to God and lead them with him. Start today, recommit, and wholly follow God. Your past is history, your future's a mystery, but you live in, in the present where you meet with God. Now that is your inheritance. And so God's pattern when we look at the overall picture in these lists, we see that this is the pattern for God's people. It is a realistic view of how things are. Judah couldn't drive out the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The city was hard to take. It was set on a hill and that made it easy to defend. No matter how hard the struggle, with God's promise and God's help, there is no good reason why this city should stay in Canaanite hands. And it did until David takes it in 2 Samuel chapter 5. Can we see this happening in our lives? When the battle seems too great, when we give in to sin and the struggle of combating this world, when we just give in and live as part of this world, saying, really, it can't be that bad. We carry the name of Christ in name only, but our lives don't reflect our Saviour. It really doesn't have to be that way. With God's promises and God's help, we can live life wholly following him. 
our inheritance is real and it is in the detail of our lives. God is a present help in times of trouble. We have spiritual ups and downs. We can experience real difficulties and hardships. The battles can be very real and hard. But if we persevere, then we will get the victory and then we can have the experience of God in our lives, which is a foreshadowing of our inheritance to come. Remember this. His death on the cross is sufficient for our salvation. He is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. He lives to make intercession for them. His strength is sufficient for my weakness. He gives strength to those who are tired and more power to those who are weak. His authority is sufficient for my struggles. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore. His power is sufficient to restore me. The Lord upholds all who fall and uh, raises all who are bowed down. His knowledge and wisdom are sufficient to direct me. He knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. His grace is sufficient for all my needs. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Be encouraged to live in light of your inheritance, knowing who has given it to you. Let us pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you that our inheritance is secure in you, that you are covering us by your precious blood. May we come to the understanding in our hearts and our minds of who we are in Christ Jesus, that you take us and use us to your glory, that we know the promises, we have faith to step into them, and we know the pattern that you have laid before us, that we can trust in everything that you do and everything that you say, and that we know the, the, that, that intimacy that we have in Christ to know your presence with us. Lord, as we go forward uh, into the battle, into those areas of our lives where we struggle, Lord, help us to trust you in every step that we take. Lord, that we would see and experience that the Lord is good and that we would have a story to tell of our journey with you. And so bless us this morning in, in a very special way that we would uh, really uh, develop that, that love and care and compassion that you have for us and that we would show it to the people that we meet and, and we deal with uh, on a daily basis. And so, Lord, take us and use us to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, again, we just uh, hand back to uh, Mark and Tina uh, for that final hymn as we worship and praise the Lord as we conclude our, our time together. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Rod. We are going to close the, the service now, this morning, as we sing the song, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, principalities, nor powers, nor things that are now, nor things that are to come, can separate us from the love of Christ. With the chorus, we are more than conquerors, in Christ.